Good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa Bender. I'm the president of the Minneapolis City Council, and welcome to our first meeting of the new year. Before we begin our official business, I'm going to turn this over to the council vice president to um, share a really special and important resolution. Um, so here we go. Thank you, President Bender. And uh, again, my name is Andrea Jenkins, the vice president of the Minneapolis City Council. and wanted to make note of January 22nd as a national day of racial healing. As many of you know, uh, for the past year, I have been discussing a really important project to my heart, and that is to create a center for racial healing in South Minneapolis because of all of the trauma and um, just uh, divisive feelings that are present in in our community and unfortunately I happen to be a, um, a subject of a um, racially insensitive incident, incident a couple of weeks ago and I'm consequently uh, hosting a conversation on race within my community but here at the city we want to host a conversation on racial healing too, and that will happen on January 22nd, um, next Tuesday. So I just wanted to read this resolution in um, support and solidarity with many other cities all across the country today, um, a National Day of Racial Healing. Whereas we have all witnessed racial divisiveness rising in America's urban, rural, suburban, and tribal communities today that threatens the very core of this great country's unified front. And whereas, just like those who came before us, it is our duty to protect the children of this city and country and maintain communities in which they may all be given the opportunity to succeed. And whereas we understand and recognize that there is a racial divide in our country and we must all work earnestly to heal the wounds created by racial, ethnic, and religious bias and build an equitable and just society so that all children can thrive. And whereas we have the right to provide every opportunity to learn, grow, thrive, in nurturing environments that don't violate their safety, dignity, humanity, and whereas every single person has the capability to make a simple change within themselves that can have a profound effect on the entire society, and whereas if we all dedicate ourselves to the principles of truth, racial healing and transformation, we can all bring about the necessary changes in thinking and behavior that will propel this great country forward as a unified force where racial biases will become a thing of the past. And whereas racial healing is vital and crucial commitment to the education, social, mental, and overall well-being of our children, and whereas the city of Minneapolis, in conjunction with others throughout the United States of America, acknowledges January 22nd, 2019, as the National Day of Racial Healing, and urges all people to promote racial healing and transformation in ways that are best suited for them individually as a means to working together to ensure the best quality of life for every child. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the city council do hereby honor and recognize January 22nd, 2019 as the National Day of Racial Healing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you know, I just want to acknowledge the leadership of our council vice president and and say that, you know, our council members of color and the staff who work for the city that are people of color show up every day and lead and write policy and direct our city at the same time that they're experiencing the trauma daily, both big and small of white supremacy. And I'm just really grateful for your leadership and the strength that you all show. And, um, you know, we are all committed to dismantling those systems of white supremacy. This is one way that we can do that. So thank you. Thank you.
With that, I will now call to order the first regular meeting of 2019. Today is January 18th, 2019. I'm Lisa Bender. I'm the president of the Minneapolis City Council, and I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. <coughs> Council Member Goodman. Present. Johnson. Here. Palmasano. Present. Gordon. Here. Cano. Here. Reich. Here. Fletcher. Here. Jenkins. Here. Schrader. Here. Warsami is absent. Cunningham. Present. Ellison. Present. President Bender. Here. There are 12 members present. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum for today's meeting. The first item is adoption of our agenda. I have two uh, amendments to the agenda to offer, which are in front of us. Um, and that is a motion to amend the agenda to include under the order of adjournment the following legal matters as part of the closed session, which is the City of Minneapolis versus Hilton and Tyler Quigley versus the City of Minneapolis and William Eberly. And that will be part of a closed session. Um, along with the other. Is there any other amendments to the council agenda for today? Seeing none, is there a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. All in approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. That carries and the ad agenda is adopted as amended. Next we have the minutes from the meeting of December 5th and December 7th for acceptance. Is there a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. All in approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, that carries and those minutes are accepted. And finally, we have the referral of petitions, communications, and reports to the proper committees. Is there a motion for those referrals? So moved. Second. All in approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, that carries and those referrals are made. The next order of business is the reports of our standing committees. The ref first report is from our Economic Development and Regulatory Services Committee, given by the Chair, Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. The Economic Development and Regulatory okay. Services Committee is bringing 16 items forward for approval this morning. Items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are licenses and business license operating conditions for various restaurants in the city. Item 6 are rescinding some license operating conditions. Item 7 are the liquor license approvals and 8 are the liquor license renewals. There's a lot of them. Item 9 are the gambling license approvals, and 10 are the gambling license renewals. 11 are license operating conditions for the Northeast Palace. Item 12 are business license operating conditions for Wild Greg Saloon. Items 13, 14, 15 are rental license reinstatements. And item 16 is approving the budget and continued operation of the government for a program at McPhail Center for the Arts. With that, I'll move items 1 through 16 for approval this morning. Councilmember Goodman has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that agenda is adopted. I uh, will note that we've been joined by Councilmember Warsami. Next is a report from our Housing Policy and Development Committee presented by the Chair, Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, President Bender. The Housing Policy and Development Committee is bringing six items forward for approval. The uh, first is a land sale. And this is a land sale for the Penn Avenue Union Affordable Housing Project at 2200 Golden Valley Road and also 1911 and 1915 Penn Avenue North. And this is to Building Blocks, Inc. Second item concerns the same project at the same location and is a resolution authorizing final approval of the issuance of tax-exempt multifamily housing revenue entitlement bonds in the amount not to exceed $9.6 million. <laughs> the third item is about the same project and that's approving a loan from our Affordable Housing Trust Fund's Family Housing Initiative for the project in the amount not to exceed $150,000. Um, and that increases the total award by $75,000 for a new cumulative total um, housing trust fund award of $1.6 million. The fourth item is doing a project analysis for the Lake Street Housing Phase 1 Affordable Housing Project at 410 and 414 West Lake Street and also 2945 and 2943 Harriet Avenue. And this is to authorize our staff to continue the analysis to determine if it's appropriate to use tax increment financing on the project. Item five is accepting our 2018 Metropolitan Council Livable Communities Demonstration Account Development Grants. And this is uh, one point, over $1.6 million. Um, and there's actually a variety of projects there, so it, it, it's even more than that. But um, 
significant. And the sixth item is the um, accepting grants from the Metropolitan Council Livable Communities Local Housing Incentive Account um, for a number of projects also happening in Minneapolis, specifically Maya Commons and also the um, project where the Navigation Center is right now and um, near North Minneapolis. I can, I will move the report and all items forward for approval. Councilmember Gordon has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Allison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. Next we have the report from our Intergovernmental Relations Committee presented by the Chair, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. The Intergovernmental Relations Committee is bringing one item forward today. It is a transmission to the Charter Commission of a proposed amendment to the city's charter related to the biennial budget process. I'll go ahead and move that item in the report. Councilmember Johnson has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Allison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries, and the report is adopted. Next is the report of the Public Health, Environment, Civil Rights, and Engagement Committee, presented by the Chair, Councilmember Cunningham. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Health, Environment, Civil Rights, and Engagement Committee brings forward three items for approval today. The first is approving the report and recommendations on the cross motions in the matter of food law orders with Uptown Local War. The second is accepting a grant from Hennepin County for the Minneapolis Health Department school-based clinics. And the third is approving recommendations from the Northern Metals Advisory Committee regarding the use of settlement funds dedicated to the community asthma and lead reduction. I move approval of these items. Councilmember Cunningham has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. <coughs> President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that is adopted. Next is a report from the Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee uh, presented by the Chair Councilmember Cano. Ooh. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee brings forward three items for approval. The first is um, authorizing a contract with Hennepin Technical College for training of Minneapolis Police Department cadets. The second item is a passage of a resolution accepting a donation from Kid Fire Safety Products of smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. And the final item is passage of a resolution accepting a donation of generators from the Department of Defense uh, Fire Firefighter Property Program to the Minneapolis Fire Department for use of um, for use in tactical operations, and I'll stand for any questions. Councilmember Cano has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. <coughs> Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. Next is the Transportation and Public Works Committee given by the Chair, Council Member Reich. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The committee forwards 20 items today. Uh, item one is the land uh, sale portion of the right of way adjacent to 177 Glenwood Avenue to Catholic Charities. Item two is the 2019 street resurfacing uh, program, the designation of the costs and the public benefit. Um, those areas are listed um, and there will be a public hearing uh, established. Uh, item three is the contract with CNN Consulting Engineers for plans, specification, and services for construction of the Central City Parallel Storm Tunnel. Item four is the contract amendment with uh, FERPAL Construction USA for structural lining of water mains. Item five is the contract amendment with Progressive Rail Incorporated for 61st Street West Street Reconstruction Project. Item six is the contract amendment with Pete's Warner Water Sewer uh, for the Jarrett Avenue Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project. Item seven is a contract amendment with Wright & Company uh, for Upton, Vincent, and 51st Avenue Sanitary Sewer Replacement. Item eight is the contract with NAC for pump station number six boilers. 
Nine is a contract uh, amendment with PCI Roads for gate valve bolt repair and replacement. Ten is a contract amendment with Egan Company for parking ramp camera surveillance project. Item 11 is a contract amendment with uh, Yergin Construction Company for Nicollet Mall Art restoration. Uh, item 12 is a contract amendment with Formation Studio for Nicollet Mall Art in general. Item 13 is acquisition of property for the St. Anthony Parkway pro uh, Bridge Project. 14 is the uh, Hennepin County's Draft Mobility 2040 Plan, a submission of our comments as a city. 15 is the Metro Green Line Extension, Southwest Light Rail, Water Main Easements with Burlington Northern Santa Fe. 16 is the NCA Men's Basketball Final Four Large Block Event Permit around U.S. Bank Stadium. Uh, that permit will be for April 5th through the 8th. 17 is the uh, same tournament, uh, Large Block Event Permit for Nicollet Mall for the same dates. Item 18 is the Hoyer Heights uh, Residential Street Reconstruction Project, project layout. 19 is the temporary easements of right-of-way agreements for the same project. And the final item is a bid for the Minneapolis Parking Integrated Video Management System. Uh, Madam President, I move all items as submitted. Council Member Reich has moved the committee's report. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. Next is a report from the Ways and Means Committee presented by the Chair Council Member Warsami. I thank you, Madam President. The Ways and Means Committee brings 28 items uh, for approval today. Item number one is a land sale, uh, 14 Royalston Avenue North to the Metropolitan Council. Item number two is an acceptance of grants from the MacArthur Foundation for Court Ride Pilot Project. Item number three is an amicus sta statutes in lawsuits challenging federal administration's immigration-related policies. Item number four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine are legal settlements. Item number 10 is also a legal settlement. Item number 11 is a contract amendment with uh, Bergen KDV Technologies and Consulting Inc. for Convention Center Parking Ramp IT Services. Item number 12 is a bid for theatrical stage lighting for the Convention Center. Item number 13 is a, a rebid for the Minneapolis Convention Center's lighting update. Item number 14 is a rebid for the Target Center House Reduction Systems Project. Item number 15 is an annual property insurance premium for the Minneapolis Convention Center uh, building and parking deck. Item number 16, is a technical amendment to the 2019 five-year capital program and general appropriation resolution for the Municipal Building Commission's elevator upgrades and modernization project. Item number 17 is a capital long-range improvement committee appointments. Item number 18 is a community solar garden agreement. Item number 19 is a contract amendment for ZPIC data for, electric, for electronic collection and con conversion of utility bills. Item number 20 is a contract amendment with Fitorian Inc. for the Enterprise Resource Planning Programs Finance Reporting Services. Item number 21 is a bid for the new public service building project for waterproofing. Item number 22 is a request for the qualifications for workplace systems furniture for the public service building project. Item number 23 is an agreement with Formation Studios for prototyping for public art for the new public service building. Item number 24 is an agreement with Randy Walker for public art for the East Side Storage and Maintenance Facility. Item number 25 is a contract amendment with Cultural Brokers LLC for Strategic and Racial Equity Action Plan. Item number 26 is a membership agreement with Northside Economic Opportunity Network. Item number 27 is a contract amendment with the Center for Energy and Environment for building benchmarking and disclosure services. And the final item is a contract with Paradigm Complex Care Solutions for nurse case management and other workers' compensation related services. And I move approval of all 28 items. Council Member Warsami has moved the Ways and Means report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Connor. Aye. Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries, and the report is adopted. Next, we have the report from Zoning and Planning presented by the Chair, <laughs> Council Member Schrader. 
Thank you, Madam President. Uh, zoning and planning will be bringing forward 14 items. Uh, the first is the approval of an interim use permit at 311 2nd Street Southeast. Number two is the um, has two things. So one, you'll note um, the, one of the appeals was withdrawn, and you'll have the finding of facts uh, before you. Um, but we've also granted an appeal for the land use application at 30 South 3rd Street. Uh, number four is the conditional use permit, uh, the denial of conditional use permit variance and site plan review at 4040 Washington 40 um, and 4040, 4050 and a half Washington Avenue North. Number five is the approving of the rezoning at 2200 and 2201 Fremont Avenue North. Uh, number six is the approving of an application at uh, 934 and 938 15th Avenue Southeast. Number seven is the approving of a rezoning at 2637 and 2645 First Avenue South. Uh, the number eight is also the approval of a rezoning at uh, 1101 Hennepin Avenue East. Number nine is the approving of a rezoning at 2325 East 38th Street and 3812 24th Avenue South. Number 10 is the approval of a rezoning at 1202, 1206, 1208, 1214 4th uh, Street Southeast as well as 316 12th Avenue Southeast. The uh, number 11 is the approving of a right of way vacation at uh, 165, 167. Uh, Three and 177 Glenwood Avenue. Number 12 is the approval of a commemorative street name addition um, on 4th Street North between uh, West Broadway Avenue and 21st Avenue North. Number 13 is the approval of the Heritage Preservation Commission appointments. And number 14 is the mini approval of the Minneapolis Arts Commission appointments. I'll be moving uh, number one and two as well as four through 14. Councilmember Schrader have moved those items in the ZMP report. Is there any discussion on those items? Councilmember Fletcher. Thank you, President Bender. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank my colleagues on ZMP and uh, thank the Planning Commission and the city staff who worked on the United Properties uh, project. This gateway building is going to be something really special. I think it's uh, this is an, an, uh, a surface parking lot that has long been uh, underserving what really could be an important entrance to our city. Uh, we put a lot of conditions on this project, uh, and United Properties has done a great deal to work with us to make sure that the public realm is really special. Uh, to make sure I mean, you know we're getting we're getting a hotel that's going to add banquet capacity and 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 facility uh, on the north end of downtown, which is very exciting. I think there's a lot of really good public benefit. Um, uh, to what's happening with this project, and they're working very hard uh, uh, to make sure that both the construction of the project and uh, and then the jobs that are created within the building uh, are good uh, uh, good jobs with good labor relationships. And so I'm enthusiastic about all of that. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, offered some ideas that led to some improvements, and so I'm excited uh, to see the approval of this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Fletcher. Any further discussion on ZNP items 1, 2, or 4 through 14? Seeing none, Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Palmasano? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Cano? Aye. Wright? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Jenkins? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Warsami? Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Ellison? Aye. President Bender? Aye. There are 13 ayes. Those items carry. That returns us to ZNP item number 3. Councilmember Schrader. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to defer to Councilmember Johnson. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this item, item number three, the appellant is seeking an extension. Uh, they would like to make significant modifications to uh, this project as a result of the committee's denial uh, and ultimately something that strikes a better balance for its location and proximity to our Creek and Minnehaha Park and uh, being within the Shoreland Overlay District. So I'll go ahead and uh, move that we refer this back to committee and then uh, we'll note that it will probably be up on the April 11th agenda, which should give them adequate time not only to make adjustments but also to uh, go back to the community for feedback and uh, give our staff adequate time as well to review uh, their revised proposal. Thank you, Council Member Johnson. And um, just a clarifying question, um, with that date of April 11th, is um, that would allow us enough time to meet the 60-day rule with an extension? Correct, Thank exactly. You. Okay, so Council Member Johnson has moved to refer this item back to committee 
for the April 11th date. Um, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that is adopted. All right. So that concludes the committee reports. The next item of business this morning is our resolutions, and we have the one honorary resolution um, that was presented by the Council Vice President at the beginning of the meeting, uh, for, which was the honorary resolution declaring January 22nd as the National Day of Racial Healing. Are there any further comments on that resolution? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no, that carries, and the resolution is adopted. Next, we have the order of unfinished business. The first item is receiving a report from the Charter Commission about the proposed charter amendment pertaining to the oversight of our police department. The commission has returned its response to us um, and um, did not, they declined to put this item on, um, out for a vote um, to amend the charter. Uh, so now we must decide as a city council um, how to proceed with submitting a ballot question to the voters. Um, so the clerk has communicated with us about some potential options. I see Councilmember Gordon in queue, I believe, um, that likely the action um, suggested by staff would be to refer this to our IGR committee, which has the responsibility for, her, um, for handling charter commission, um, or charter amendments. Uh, but I will turn this over to Council Member Gordon. Thank you, President Bender. I was gonna make that motion. Um, it, it almost sounded like you were gonna make it as well, but I think that's appropriate that we send this to the um, Intergovernmental Relations Committee so that they can uh, have more time to review it and have staff review it as well. Thank you. Thank you. So Councilmember Gordon has moved to refer this item to the RGR committee and to and to receive the Charter Commission's report. Is there any further discussion? Councilmember Palmasano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I've been a vocal critic of this amendment from the onset, and my office has closely followed the process from the beginning. And mostly I want to thank the Charter Commission and the Clerk's Office and the City Attorney's Office for all the time they dedicated to this matter. Um, I appreciate and respect the recommendation to council that we not move forward with this amendment. Um, but I also have to say that I appreciate council member Gordon's intent behind exploring the question here. And the report and the information we got back has some really good content in it that I think is worthy of deliberation. Um, a couple evenings ago, I sat down with council member Gordon and we spoke a lot about this. Um, while I don't agree with the initial approach, I think that I, along with every single council member here, does agree that we all have a role in transforming police culture for the better. Um, I plan to vote yes to send this back to IGR because while I, again, don't think this was the right approach, I do think that any staff time devoted to research and more exploration of this report um, could help us find answers and good things, to things we could be doing differently and to ensure productive, effective change in how we help our first responders show up to serve people in our city. So um, I feel confident saying this because we've already started to see meaningful steps in the right direction, whether it's Chief Arredondo's commitment to officer wellness, um, more investments in the mindfulness movement, which is about training officers before trauma in dealing with trauma, um, Councilmember Gordon and I spoke about what it might take to create better training for our officers in, in scope of training facilities. Um, and we're in the process of doing an audit on hiring practices that Minneapolis Police Department is participating in with our internal audit department. So I remain committed to this shared goal. So in the spirit of how we this gets referred to IGR to look at more broadly how we can look at the content that came back in this report, I think that's a positive thing. So I just wanted to thank Council Member Gordon for our long conversation about this, and I will be voting yes to refer this to IGR. Is there any further discussion on Council Member Gordon's motion? I will just briefly comment then that um, I, I also really appreciate um, I, what I think is an opportunity for us to do some more community engagement about the overall issue of governance and oversight of our police department. Um, when we 
first discussed this, a lot of what we heard um, was certainly support in the community for um, for more oversight and continued commitment to reform. And I think one of the pieces um, that we now have an opportunity to explore further is the ways in which we can strengthen civilian oversight of our police department um, and really make sure that people in our community feel connected to that those functions and they feel actively involved in the ways in which we are shaping the future of policing in our city and community safety. So um, I look forward to the next steps that we will hear at our IGR committee. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Nay. Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Allison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 12 ayes and one nay. That carries and that is referred to the IGR committee. Next, we have a series of licensing issues that have been continued under unfinished business since the original meeting in October. I will go ahead and move to postpone these items again and see if there's any discussion. Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that is adopted. Next we have announcements and I'll pause and see if you have any announcements for council members. Council member Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to uh, acknowledge in addition to January 22nd being um, National Day of Racial Healing. It is also the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to highlight that and, and I'll ask uh, Councilmember Goodman to speak to it. She reminded me of it, but it, it speaks to the fact that all of these issues are intersectional. I also want to just announce and acknowledge, and I think we all know that um, January 15th, it was uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and we celebrate that on um, January 21st this year. And so, um, ask you all to to go out and do some community service in honor of the spirit of Dr. King. And um, I invite uh, Councilmember Goodman to maybe say a little bit about um, the decision at the Supreme Court to give women the right to control their own bodies. <laughs> Councilmember uh, Goodman. Thank you, Madam Vice President. On January 22nd, 1973, the Supreme Court in an historic ruling determined that women have the right to make decisions about their own reproductive rights. Many of you know uh, I was the executive director of a large pro-choice organization for five years prior to coming to the city council, and so that date is emblazoned upon my memory, and I'm glad to see that other progressive causes have joined in sharing that date because there's more power with all of us joining together. One thing, though, that does come to mind to me is that almost other than probably council members Jenkins Gordon and I, most people probably on this panel don't remember a time when abortion rights were illegal, when women seeking abortions went literally to back alleys and used hangers and other devices in order to terminate non-planned pregnancy. And as we move forward in this country, thinking that that's a right that um, is never going to be eliminated. We only need to look at the current political landscape to see how the right has been chipped away over many, many years. Um, so I think of January 27th in many ways as a celebration, uh, January 22nd is in many ways as a celebration, but in many ways as a warning to us uh, that should we not remain vigilant about how we think the world should be as it pertains to women seeking their own right to self-determination over their own bodies, um, that we will be right back to where we were because we're very close to that point now. You only need look at the number of providers in the state of Minnesota, the distances that women need to go to to get reproductive services as well as the 
ongoing um, discrimination against women as it pertains to equal rights and contraception and access to contraception. Um, so uh, I think it's an important date. I don't, you know, over the years I haven't really talked a lot about it, uh, trying to kind of keep the political and personal out of the policy of the city, uh, but on an anniversary date like this one, when we'll all be working together to ensure that everybody has the right to self-determination over their own bodies and to not uh, discriminate against every, anyone else's decisions. I think this is a, an interesting way to bring these two together, and I want to thank Councilmember Jenkins for bringing it up. Thank you, Councilmember Goodman. Councilmember Fletcher. Thank you, President Bender. Um, I wanted to share with my colleagues uh, that uh, uh, the first week of this year, um, Minneapolis sent a delegation to our sister city in Harbin, China. Um, Council Member Reich and I, along with uh, members of uh, Meet Minneapolis and the US-China People's Friendship Association, uh, traveled to Harbin, which uh, for those of you who don't know, is a large city uh, in the far northeast of China, uh, very close to uh, the border with Russia uh, and close to Siberia. They brag uh, as one of their major assets that they have a very strong winter. Uh, they don't apologize for it. They, uh, they take a great deal of pride in that that's a great place to go to experience winter. And I can confirm they do have a very strong winter. And, and, and their uh, ice and snow festival is spectacular. And so I wanted to uh, uh, just share that we had that experience and pass along to my colleagues uh, a, a very authentic and heartfelt expression of uh, uh, warmth and friendship uh, shared with us from uh, the uh, people of Harbin who hosted uh, a really wonderful conference of all of their sister cities uh, and showed us a great deal of hospitality and friendship and I think we were successful in uh, deepening the relationship with our sister city so I uh, wanted to share that uh, it was a nice way to start the new year and I'll invite Councilman Burick to add anything if uh... oh well thank you it's okay with Madam President. Um, yeah, I concur with uh, uh, Councilmember Fletcher's uh, description of that. Uh, yeah, we say we're the bold north, but man, when the winds of Siberia blow over to our sister city in Harbin uh, unabated, uh, it's, a, it's another level of experience. Um, but they do embrace it. It's spectacular uh, how they've embraced it and built a whole sort of culture on it. But also I was struck by the stories of what it's like when it's not winter there. They uh, are a city that really celebrates its river. Um, they treat it as a true treasure, um, and it's really heavily used, as it was described to me. And looking out uh, over uh, from our different vantage points, uh, different times a day, looking at the river, even in its frozen state, you can just imagine how well it's used because how well it was preserved. Um, it is definitely a gorgeous, gorgeous natural um, uh, amenity, which they have made kind of the central aspect of their civic life and health. And I think we can learn lessons from that as well. Thank you. Council Member Cunningham. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to, there's two things. I wanted to first welcome Patrick Henry students from my ward. Um, being able to have uh, students from my community be here, seeing what the work looks like, seeing all of us. Um, I'm just a really big honor to have you all here. I uh, wanted to welcome you. And I also wanted to let my colleagues know as well um, that on Tuesday the 22nd, which is apparently um, a lot happening that day. I'm going to be having my first State of the Fourth Ward address on that night at Patrick Henry at 6 o'clock. So um, all of you are welcome, as well as the folks who might be watching at home, and all of you as well, because you are already there basically anyway. So all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other announcements from council members? Seeing none, uh, I'll see if there's a motion to adjourn, and that would be a motion to adjourn to the closed session to discuss uh, litigation matters with our city attorney. Is there a motion to adjourn to the, that meeting? So moved. All in approval, please say aye. 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 Oh, any opposed say no. That carries. We are adjourned. And thank you for coming. Welcome again. Have a great weekend.